Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, thank you so much for joining us. I'm excited to have you. And if you are returning, welcome back. I'm excited to see you again. On Saturday specifically, we talk about a paranormal story or strange history or conspiracy theory. Currently, I'm on a series of King Henry VIII and his uh, six wives. Today is wife number five. So if that's something you might be interested in, you can go ahead and hit the little subscribe button down below and the little bell icon so you can be notified when I upload only if you're interested, no pressure. On Saturday, while talking about something that's not true crime related, I usually I am doing my makeup. I am not a makeup artist. I don't know the theory behind makeup. I'm not claiming to be a makeup artist. I'm just doing something uh, fun for myself. So uh, yeah, no hate, please. I'm just doing what I think works best for me. I do want to give a quick warning that some of the things that we talk about here can be kind of heavy, so if that's something your mental health cannot handle, just go ahead and click off this video and I will catch you somewhere else, but your mental health will always be more important than any YouTube video ever will be. So with all of that being said, let's go ahead and jump into today's video. So like I said, today uh, we are talking about King Henry VIII and his six wives. Today we are on wife number, number five and that is Catherine Howard. Catherine was born anywhere between 1518 and 1527. Birth records were not kept as accurately as they are today, and especially if you weren't like someone that was born into prominence, your birthday wasn't considered very important. And Catherine did come from a uh, family of noble men and women, but not like that important, if that makes sense. Her father was Edmund Howard, and her mother was Joyce Culpepper. Edmund was the Duke of Norfolk, and so he was a decently pro uh, prominent person, but uh, he was also Joyce Culpepper's second husband. Joyce Culpepper was once married to a man named Sir John Lee, and she had her first five children with Sir John Lee, and then after he passed away, she married Edmund Howard, and they had another five children together. The thing about Joyce Culpepper is that all of her children made it to adulthood. This was extraordinary because during medieval times, the birth, uh, the infant mortality rate was about 50%. So, you know, to have all of your 11 children make it to adulthood was a pretty unheard of thing. So Catherine was the second to last child born of the 11 children that Joyce Culpepper had. And like I said, their family was pretty prominent, not like super prominent, but they, they did have a name that was relevant during that time. But Joyce Culpepper, Catherine Howard's mother, would die when Catherine was about six years old. And during this time, it was pretty common for families to send their children to live elsewhere to like get their education. And the Howards were no different. So after uh, um, Joyce Culpepper died, her children were sent to live with different relatives of their family. And Catherine was sent to go live with um, one of her father's relatives named Agnes Howard. Agnes had a like home for kids to go to to get their education. Agnes was also a very prominent um, woman. She was very well respected in the community. And Agnes had children from all walks of life coming to her house. And she was known for treating everyone with kindness and respect while they were there. So Agnes really didn't treat children differently based on, you know, their family's income or how well known they were or anything like that. But the one thing since Agnes did come from a, or since Catherine did come from a pretty good home, she might have just gotten away with some things that other children wouldn't have. But it's not like Agnes was terrible to the other children if they didn't come from such well off homes. Catherine would have been taught, um, you know, etiquette and um, dancing and those kinds of things also had to read and write. But Catherine also would have been taught in music and she had a music teacher named Henry Maddox. Now Henry Maddox would have been uh, significantly older than Catherine. He would have been in his uh, mid to early tw or early to mid 20s. But Catherine was only about 12 to 14 when he was teaching her. It didn't take long for this relationship to become kind of predatory, and um, Henry Maddox decided that he wanted to be with Catherine. Now, yeah, it was pretty typical for girls to be married off very, very young during this time, but it really seems like this 
relationship was pretty predatory, like maybe Catherine didn't really want it. There were, uh, it's recorded saying that um, Henry Maddox was really, he was really, really after Catherine. In fact, he even said that he would have her maidenhood, but this really upset Catherine and she like told him off and told him like she was not interested in it at all. What's funny though is that there was another man that Agnes hired as basically her secretary. Um, his name was Francis Durham and he and Catherine also had a relationship but this was uh, he would have been the same age as Henry Maddox but it seemed like Catherine really wanted this relationship. She was really into the idea of being with Francis Durham. In fact, it went so far that uh, Francis and Henry, or Francis and Catherine, would call each other husband and wife, and they would spend a lot of time together. And even when Francis would go off on like trips or like business trips or anything like that, Catherine would keep his money safe for him. This relationship did become physical, and back in those times, if you became physical before you were married, it was like considered that you were already married. It was like a contract of marriage. But Catherine and Francis also had to keep this relationship under wraps because they weren't married, and so it would have been considered inappropriate. But Agnes did eventually find out about this relationship, and she sent Francis back to Ireland. But Francis promised Catherine that he would be back for her and that they would one day be married. Not long after Francis was sent back to Ireland, he uh, Catherine became a lady-in-waiting to Anne of Cleves. Now, if you remember, I know it's been two weeks since we've talked about any of this, but Catherine of... Um, or Anne of Cleves was the wife that Henry deemed too ugly for him. Anne of Cleves and Henry married in January of 1540. And not long after the marriage, uh, King Henry VIII started looking for a way to divorce Anne of Cleves. And as we remember from last week, or two weeks before, Anne of Cleves at first was not wanting to have this divorce go through, but eventually she agreed and she really dodged a bullet and was able to dodge all of Henry's, like, wrath. And so, yeah, she kind of came out much better than the rest of Henry's wives. But while Anne of Cleves and Henry were still married, um, it was rumored that Henry, it didn't take Henry very long to, you know, get another mistress. And this mistress was Catherine Howard. It's not exactly known how Catherine Howard and King Henry met, but it was soon after uh, Catherine Howard made it to the palace to become a lady-in-waiting to Anne of Cleves that she met Thomas Culpepper. And Thomas Culpepper was uh, kind of like on the right-hand side of the king. He was, he worked very closely with the king and he also was a very close friend of the king. So it's believed that that is how Catherine Howard met King Henry VIII. But it was really early on into King Henry VIII's marriage with Anne of Cleves that it was rumored that he was seeing Catherine Howard. So Catherine would have been only about 17 years old when she became a mistress to King Henry VIII, and King Henry was pushing 50 at this point. So this was probably more of a predatory relationship as well, but not unheard of for older men to marry much younger women in those times too. But not long after... And agreed to, Anne of Cleves agreed to the divorce with King Henry. King Henry married Catherine Howard on July 28th of 1540. And at first, people were not very impressed with this marriage because Catherine Howard would have not had the education that people deemed necessary for someone to be queen. And so not a lot of people were supporting of this. But looking at King Henry VIII, he probably was after Catherine Howard because he had this rumor surrounding him at this point that he had not been able to consummate the marriage with Anne of Cleves and that he was not able to have relations anymore. I mean, he, this guy was super embarrassed by the fact that people thought he couldn't have a successful sexual relationship anymore. So he probably was after uh, Catherine Howard because of her youth. Um, more so than her being a fit queen. I, I mean, at this point, Cat, uh, King Henry was just, it was all about him. All about what he wanted and what everyone else could do for him. But the beginning of their marriage seemed pretty great, actually. Uh, King Henry was known to shower Catherine with many gifts. 
I'm also starting to think that he might have had things like he might have really liked the name Catherine because multiple of his wives were named Catherine, but that's besides the point. But he was known to shower Catherine with gifts and spend a lot of time with her. And he, even after they got married, they took a six month trip around the country uh, as a way to, for him to show her off. He was very excited to be married to Catherine Howard. He even started taking care of his health a little better. So at this point, King Henry, um, he had had the accident where he had fallen off the horse and been unconscious for two hours. And that's kind of what changed his personality. But he also had a wound on his leg that just would not heal. And it would periodically like break open and like pus and bleed and it just would not heal. And it would, he would, he just stunk like this wound would stink. But on top of that, uh, he was not very mobile anymore because of this wound. And so he had gained a significant amount of weight. And after he married Catherine Howard, it seemed like he was interested in losing weight and looking a little bit better. In fact, he got together with his doctors and started finding ways to lose weight and he just seemed to be doing better overall. There were some rumors that Catherine might have been pregnant a couple of times, but there's no real evidence to back this up. And in fact, there are some scholars who believe that King Henry was never able to consummate any of his last marriages, but that there's really no evidence for that either. But eventually King Henry would, um, his wound on his leg would break open again, leaving him pretty immobile. And I guess he didn't want Catherine to see him that way because he was afraid that she would look at him as an old man and not want anything to do with him. So in order to kind of keep her away from this vision of him, he went to go heal on his own and left Catherine by herself. So this left Catherine alone and kind of lonely. So she started looking or like seeking other people to help spend her time with. And that's when she turned to Thomas Culpepper. Now her and Thomas had, uh, Catherine and Thomas had already been friends prior to King Henry, like going off on his own to heal. But it seems like when he, uh, King Henry left, they got even closer. They started spending a lot of time together and they started writing letters to each other and sending gifts to each other. And it's rumored that they started a physical relationship, a physical affair. And this is backed up by some of Catherine's ladies in waiting. They um, would testify later that they would often stand guard while uh, Thomas Culpepper and Catherine Howard would, would meet alone. King Henry really had no reason to be worried because he and Catherine seemed to have a pretty good relationship and Catherine was really good at handling Henry. She had um, made him a little bit more sympathetic towards people who were in prison and had made living conditions for certain people in prison a lot better. And she was just really good at influencing Henry. And now I don't know if she was actually good at influencing him or if he just wanted to keep her happy because she was so much younger. But either way, King Henry had nothing to worry. He didn't think he had anything to worry about leaving um Catherine um Catherine Howard by herself and so like the fact that Catherine started having this relationship kind of came out of left field but Catherine probably didn't think that she had anything to worry about when it came to King Henry because like I said she was very good at managing him and she had also brought in several of her family members and um her friends to work in the castle with her next to her in fact she took it so far that she brought francis durham in to work in the castle with king henry so she used her influence that she had uh with king henry to bring him in and many people think that this might have actually been blackmail that the reason she brought francis durham in to work with henry was because he blackmailed her but either way she had several people that she thought were really on her side that wouldn't betray her this way. And so she probably thought she was safe meeting with Thomas Culpepper and that King Henry would never find out. But this all would take a wild turn when King Henry's Archbishop Thomas Kramer would give Henry a letter uh, in 1541 accusing Catherine of all of her affairs. Thomas Kramer probably didn't want to see the Howards in a position of power because they were a little bit more modern in their religious beliefs and he was afraid that uh, 
with Catherine Howard as King Henry's queen, that England would take a much more modern approach to the religion. Thomas Kramer probably thought if he was able to get Catherine out of her position, that he could kind of take England in the way that he wanted it to go. At first, King Henry was pretty shocked by the accusations that Catherine was having an affair, but he started investigating her right away. And at this point, King Henry is still very much in love with Catherine, and he still very much wants to be with her. So during this investigation, he really wanted to find out that these accusations were untrue. So he locked Catherine in her room and told her that he would come get her when he was done investigating. But sadly, she would need, never be cleared of any of these accusations. All of the men from Catherine Howard's past were interviewed, including Henry Maddox and Francis Durham and Thomas Culpepper. Henry Maddox was one of the first to be interviewed, and he did say that he and um, Catherine had had a relationship, but it had never been physical. So Henry Maddox would be released, and he was the only one that was released during this investigation. So Francis Durham would be the next person to be interviewed, and he did admit that he and Catherine had a physical relationship and that there was even a contract for them to be married. But he was adamant that after he had come to the uh, to work for King Henry, that he had not pursued Catherine in that way and that their relationship was strictly platonic. After being tortured, Francis Durham said that the only reason he had not, like he was, he was tortured to get this confession out of him. But um, after, after he was, he had been tortured, he said that the only reason he hadn't pursued Catherine after he had came back to the courts was because she had already started a relationship with Thomas Culpepper. So Francis Durham was executed for this relationship with Catherine Howard. So then came Thomas Culpepper, and he was also interviewed, or aka tortured, and during his confession, he said that he and Catherine had not yet had a physical relationship, but it was on its way there, and they had planned to be physical in the future. So Thomas Culpepper was also executed for his relationship with Catherine Howard. So when it was finally time for Catherine Howard to be interviewed, she was hysterical, almost so hysterical that she was unable to be interviewed. She did admit that she did have a relationship with all of these men, but she absolutely denied that there was a marriage contract between her and Francis Durham. The sad thing about this is, if she had just admitted that there was a contract between her and Francis, this possibly could have saved her life because this would have meant that the marriage between her and King Henry was null and void. They would have been able to get an annulment for everything and she probably would have gone on to live a very happy life without what was going to happen next. But since she said that there was no contract between her and Francis Durham and she had had a physical relationship with these men, that that meant that that was a that was treason against the king. Catherine would later come out and say that she had been essayed by these by uh, by Francis Durham, but that even that would not save her life. Catherine was convicted of treason and she was sentenced to death. And like I said, Thomas Culpepper and Francis Durham were both executed for this as well. Catherine was very brave when she was facing her death. Uh, she went to the same place that Anne Boleyn, the Tower of London, and was stayed in those apartments the night before her execution. And she even asked for the executioner's block to be brought into her room so that she could practice where she needed to put her head the next morning. It seems that she was uh, determined to accept her fate with poise and dignity. On February 13th of 1542, Catherine was uh, executed. She seemed very calm when she came to the block. She did falter once and did have to be helped up to the executioner's like stand. But other than that, she spoke kindly of King Henry and she begged the king not to hold her, f her family in contempt for what she had done because they didn't know. Catherine is often talked about as someone who just wanted to have a good time and was kind of wild. But I think it's I think we should remember that she was so young when all of this happened. I remember being 18 and I remember just wanting to have a good time when I was 18 too and Catherine was probably no different. She had so many things that she still needed to figure out and she just needed to grow up a little bit but she wasn't given that chance. So what are your thoughts on Catherine Howard? I would love to know down below. I think she deserved better and I'm sure the majority of you agree with me. But yeah, I would love to know your thoughts on this down below. But that's pretty much all I have for you today. I will see you next 
next week with the final of King Henry's wives. And uh, then we'll move on to something different. I think I know what we're going to talk about. I think it'll be a conspiracy theory because I've had one in mind. But yeah, I would love to know your thoughts, like I said, and um, I hope this finds you safe, well and loved and I will see you next time. Bye.